In PLM360, a particular revision of a component part or subassembly can be assigned effectivity dates, which define a period of time during which that item is valid. When a bill of material contains that item, it will show whatever revision of it is relevant at that point in time and we can choose to view such a bill of materials as it would appear at a given point in the past, present or future. This capability allows improved and more flexible planning, for example for manufacturing and purchasing departments, and also more accurate tracking of previous configurations of a bill of material. So let's see how date effectivity works. When you create a new release of an item, provided the option to do it has been set in your PLM360 environment, you can define the date from which this item becomes valid or effective. For example, here we have a small assembly containing three component parts. All of them are in production at revision A, but we want to make a small change to one of them, item 1.3, the PCB mounting plate. So, we create a change order to do this and the change order which I started creating earlier outlines details of the change which is to a different lighter material specification. We just need to add a reference to the part to be modified by setting it as our affected item and set the life cycle option to production release telling PLM360 we want this part to remain in production but to take it to the next release to reflect the material change. When we do this, we're given the option to set its effectivity date. Now for many items which we revise, we'll typically use the default setting of on release, which means the item becomes valid as soon as it's released through the change order workflow. However, in this case, we still have stock of the existing version of the mounting plate, revision A, to last for at least another two weeks, and we're happy to use up this stock before we start to use this new version. Therefore, we set a date effectivity of just over two weeks' time. So until that point, revision A will be the valid component in this bill of materials. After that time, revision B will be. So as soon as the change order is signed off, then this effectivity comes into force. At this point, let's review the bill of materials containing this component and take a look at how that change affects it now and in the future. So here is the bill of material as it stands today. We can see that the old version, revision A, of the PCB mounting plate, item 1.3, is still the valid revision of that component, though we are informed that it has been superseded. If we set the bill of materials view to show us its valid configuration in one week's time, nothing has changed. However, if we change the view to a point after the effectivity date we set for the revised version of the PCB plate, we can see that the valid item is now revision B. And after that point, it will be the new version of this component consisting of the lighter material which will be built into our assembly. We can investigate the date effectivity details of any item in PLM360 quickly and easily. For example, if we go to the record for our PCB mounting plate item and view the latest version, revision B as we know, we can see that date we set, which was the 22nd of April. At the moment, as this is the latest revision, it's valid or effective from that point and into the future. However, if we look at revision A, we can see that it was valid from the 5th of April, which was actually its release date, up until the 21st of April. Because we set revision B to be effective from the 22nd of April, PLM360 has automatically set the end date of when revision A is effective to the day before, which is the 21st of April. So we know the full date range now when revision A was a valid item. So you can see how this capability provides a great deal of flexibility when planning what you're going to purchase and assemble by looking forwards at the future bill of material configuration 
and also how it provides accurate traceability by looking back at past Bill of Materials configurations. A related capability here in PLM360 is revision pinning. Using this facility, we can fix or pin a particular revision of a component or subassembly within a specific bill of materials so that only that revision is used in that bill of materials, regardless of whether it's the latest or not. This effectively overrides any date effectivity applied to that item within that particular bill of materials. So let's say we've changed another component in our assembly, the battery holder, and this is now at revision B. This is reflected in the latest working version of our bill of materials. However, a problem has just been found with this new part in production and, until the, the issue has been investigated and solved, we must revert back to the old revision A so that production can continue. To do this quickly, we can edit our bill of materials and pin revision A as the valid version for this assembly. This will override the change to revision B, including any date effectivity, and ensure that only revision A is used, at least until the problem solved. So pinning in this way adds another level of flexibility to help ensure our manufacturing processes run smoothly. So that's how date effectivity and revision pinning works in PLM360. This provides the ability to assign effectivity dates to an item which define a period of time during which it's valid, the capability to view a bill of materials configuration at any point in the past or future, and the ability to fix a particular revision of an item in a specific bill of materials. This allows more effective production planning and more accurate traceability of the configuration of a previous product.